That's right guys, I am now the proud owner of the Canon EOS R5 and I will be showing you guys everything this camera has to offer. It offers a lot by the way. Um, I'm going to be explaining why I chose this camera. If you are new to this channel, my name is Brandon Bruce. This is actually a pretty exciting video for me because this is my first like official video under my new channel name, Brandon Bruce. Um, if you've been following me before throughout my other adventures, um, my YouTube channel was under Escaping Comfort Zone. So I've been spending like the past year and a bit full time traveling, doing travel videos and stuff. But now things have changed in my life, um, but I still wanted to keep doing YouTube videos. So this is what I am doing now. I'm doing camera reviews, um, I'll be doing videography and photography uh, reviews as well and tutorials so be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow me for further videos. Okay, well let's just, let's jump into it. I am so excited to open this up. As I said, I have already brought this out. Um, I've charged up the batteries to make sure it's all good. So let's see what we got in the box here. First off, we got our charger. Um, I, because I actually bought this, um, like pre-ordered it a while ago, I got a few other extra things. So this camera costs me 6,500 Australian. It's quite expensive, but for what it packs in this camera is, is pretty good for the price. So that is also 3,899 US, I think. Um, but yeah, down the track, I think it'll be well worth the investment. I'm not too sure what this is. What do we got here? All right, so we got our little charger cord. Um, I got two batteries. I got, this is the Canon strap. I actually got this for free along with it. So this is a lucky Canon strap. This is cool, like a really fancy strap. Look at that, how fancy is that thing? Um, I actually won't even be using both these straps because I've been traveling for a strap that I've absolutely fell in love with. Uh, this thing right here looks very simple. Um, I don't know if you've seen these before, but these are by Peak Design. So the idea is this, like you can just clip this onto the side of your camera and then this sort of just slots into there. And I've always just had this as a wrist thing because I've never been a big fan of the side strap. But yeah, I'll leave a link in the description, guys, if you want to get yourself one of these. But I've found that having this easy, simple peak design strap just on my wrist has been overall the best use. Um, okay, 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 okay. And here, just check you over there, is what we've all been waiting for. It's a new Canon R5. Oh my god. So, first impressions on this, it's very light. It's actually so much lighter than I expected it to be. Um, if you have been following me through my previous adventures, I've been filming on my Panasonic Lumix GH5. So I've had that camera for almost two years now. That camera is quite heavy. Um, that, the GH5 is actually heavier than this. Um, so yeah, I'm quite impressed of the size. It feels really comfortable in the hand, like I'm always after a camera that just feels comfortable in the hand. Um, I'm aware that the new Sony A7S III um, had come out as well, and I'm, that was sort of like my debate of which camera I wanted, either this one or the Sony. Um, and the big giveaway for this one was just the size of it because I'm not a big fan of like the smaller cameras I don't really like the feel of Sony um, the Sony menus and just because it only shot 12 megapixel stills I uh, really just preferred the Canon more and I've actually my very first professional DSLR was a Canon 80D so it kind of feels good to go back to Canon all right let's get into all the other specs so we got an articulating screen Oh my god, so many YouTube vloggers have been asking for this in a professional camera and Canon produces the goods. Um, this is really handy to have like just for videos and photography, especially like if you're vlogging yourself. I found it handy to have on my GH5. It's quite a big screen. This is bigger than the one on my GH5 as well. So this is a 3.2 inch uh, screen. It's really good quality. And yes, the sensor. 
is a nice full frame sensor. Uh, I have, this is the first time I've ever had a full frame sensor and it is amazing. I don't know how I have not lived my life without a full frame sensor. So, well, my GH5 is a micro four third sensor and from going to that to this, holy dooly, it has been a huge upgrade. One thing that I love Canon has done with the sensor though is they put it like a protective screen on over the top of it. So right now it's off, but I've got the battery in because it's nice and charged. But when I turn the on button, boop, there we go. So that little screen like pulls up. Um, Obviously, this is really good when you're like swapping over lenses and I've turned it off, boom, closes. So yeah, when you're swapping over lenses, this is just great because no matter what situation you're in, you're always kind of concerned that you might get like dirt or grime just coming into it. I know I have on my previous camera and yeah, over time it can be a bit of an issue because you have like little spots and specks on your, on your sensor. but. Having that there, it's very simple. Oh, this is the first time I've seen a camera with that, um, but it makes a huge difference. Um, what else we got? Actually, before I jump any more information on this, I'm gonna open up my lens. Okay, so this is the first time ever seeing this lens. This is the Canon RF 15 to 35 mil lens. Here we go. Holy crap. What? What? Are you serious? Look at that. What a beast. Look, look. Okay, so to get this to comparison, the lens, the camera, the lens is like almost, it's, the lens is the size of the camera pretty much. I actually think the lens is bigger. Oh, this is insane. <laughs> That's what you get for quality lenses right there. Okay, take that off. Oh, oh my God. There we go. So it slides on nice and easy. Switch that on. There we go. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, actually, <laughs> I gotta put in my memory cards as well. Okay, so I also got a free memory card with my pre-order. So this is a speed up to 170 megabytes a second. So this is like your sort of normal card you have. I'll um, just quickly open up this. So I am good to go. And there we go. Just put that down on the ground. All right. So, as I said, these are the normal cards you usually have. So this is another great thing about the Canon camera is we have dual memory card slots. So I'll put this one in here. So they have one suitable for that, but the other one is suitable for the new CF Express card. So which I have right in my hands here. This, this was very expensive. This is, a speed, as I said, the other one was a speed up to 170 megabytes a second. This is speeds up to 1,700 megabytes a second. So, um, there we go. So Canon needed to put these memory cards in just because um, of like the video quality and the high frame rate quality. So as you may know, or if you didn't, this can shoot 8K. And not just 8K, this can shoot 8K raw, no crop. That's mind blown, that's crazy. <laughs> what? We are literally getting into the future now that we have 8K in a handheld camera. And it can also shoot along with 8K, it can shoot 120 frames per second up to 4K. So that was another like big deal breaker for me. I absolutely love shooting in 4K resolution and I love shooting slow-mo. Slow-mo has been a big deal for me in my like previous travel videos. Um, I've sort of just been shooting most of the time with 120 frames per second. But because I can now do that, in 4K, it is a pretty big deal. All right, here it is. So this is massive. 
I'll bring out the other one. So this card is almost twice the size and it's like a lot thicker. Um, yeah, so this can handle so much more power. If you want to shoot 8K, up to 8K or 120 frames per second in 4K, then you will need this card. As I said, it's quite expensive. I think I bought this for uh, 600 Australian dollars. <laughs> yep, yeah, just for a little memory card. Things just start to add up more and more and more. But this is 128 gigabytes. All right, pop you in. In we go. Good to rock and roll. Another amazing thing Canon has added to this camera is it has built-in image stabilization. This is the first time they've had that with a mirrorless Canon camera. Um, so that gives you five stops of stabilization. And if you have a stabilized lens on top of that, then you have up to eight stops of stabilization, which is pretty crazy. Like my GH5, I have loved because of the stabilization like a lot of times I've just been handheld and it kind of seems gimbal like so I'm really excited to test the stabilization out on this um, and just to see what it's like in real life this lens feels really smooth by the way um, oh yeah it feels good all the oh yeah yeah that's nice that's a nice lens Canon has really upped their game with the autofocus as well I think it's come on par now with Sony cameras they got like next level animal and eye head face and eye detection so it just tracks onto the eye of a person or an animal like really easy and no matter how fast it's moving you can kind of like keep track of that so you always want the eye of your subject in, like, in focus the most, so that is a big advantage. Uh, the camera with the battery is about 738 grams, but with this lens, it weighs a lot more, obviously. And so, I, what was a previous light camera is now a very heavy camera, but that's what you get for the money. And this camera also has some speed behind it. So it can shoot at 12 frames per second mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second electronic shutter. So I've got it currently in mechanical shutter right now and I'll twist this screen over if you can see that. So let's see how fast that is. Hear that? I don't know how many photos I just took then, but um, it was quite a lot. So, and we'll switch that over to electronic. Let's see how much difference that is. Look at that. It's doing a lot. See that? The, see the out border rings? That's silent. That I couldn't even hear that. That took a crap load of photos. Oh my god, every photo is a mistake. Oh, so it's so great. Like if you're like at um, a wedding or if you're at a big event and you want to shoot silently because the mechanical shutter was a little bit loud as you previously heard. Um, it's just so great having that sort of silent mode, but you can shoot so fast. Um, yeah, that was, that was impressive. Holy dooly. So other specs I love, it has a top LCD screen. So I don't know if you can see it, but that's it there. Um, and you can sort of, uh, the thing I love about this one, you can like turn on the light. Um, and when you change the mode, oh no, no, if you hold this one, is it? Oh yeah, if you press this button up here, it actually changes the mode. Um, and the setting on top of the LCD screen so you can have it set to what you would prefer the most. The back screen is also a touch screen so if you're having troubles figuring out all the controls it's kind of easy just to tap and go to where you want to go. The viewfinder is the best one I have ever seen. So this is a 5.76 million dots resolution. It's an electronic viewfinder as well so when you adjust the settings it changes like the darkness and brightness um, in time, which is really handy, I found. It's great having a full frame camera now and a full frame lens because I can just shoot so much wider. Like my Lumix was a micro four third sensor. My lens was a 12 to 35 mil, but even like at 12 mil on that camera, it is definitely not near as wide as a 15 mil on here. So this is super wide. I've almost got like most of the room in. There you go. Look how wide that is. That is crazy. And 35 mil, that 
Like, that's a good zoom. I like, I, I like the 35 mil zoom. The quality is just insane. 45 megapixels is so up there. I went from 20 megapixels. I don't even know what to do with these megapixels. 45 megapixels on a camera is a lot of detail. It might be too much for some people, but it can make a big difference in the long run. Say if you're shooting a bird in the distance um, and you've got such an epic shot of it, but you just want to zoom in on that and still keep a lot of good quality. Uh, that's sort of where it will make a difference. Um, so concerns about this camera, I've heard that there has been a lot of concerns about it overheating. Uh, but honestly, that it, it's not really that big of a concern to me. <laughs> Can I actually announce that it will overheat? Like, if you are recording, say, an 8K for a long time, it will overheat, I think, after 20 minutes. Um, and if you're recording for a long time in 4K 120, it will also overheat. But, yeah, they sort of warned us about that. Everyone's freaking out about it overheating, but... If you're shooting in 4K, like, sort of normal mode, I don't think it overheats. Like, no matter how long you shoot it for, it won't overheat. And if you're shooting in 180p, uh, 1080p, it obviously won't overheat no matter how long you shoot. So that's not an issue. And I, don't, I won't really be filming longer than, like, 30 minutes anyways on a camera. So, yeah, I think that's fine. I've also found that, like, if you've got a really wide-angle lens, um... It can be a bit warped, or like the stabilisation can be a bit warped in the corners. Um, I don't know how that is now. I feel like that's a thing that can be fixed like through software updates. But I, I think that will be fixed in the future. Um, along with the heating issue, that can also be fixed through updates. But they've already got like um, like built-in fans now. There's, they've got like a built-in fan that you can sort of stick onto the back uh, if you really need it to cool down. Um, and it's only an issue too if you're in a really hot area. So, uh, coming from Melbourne, it's quite cool here a lot of the time. So, it shouldn't have an issue overheating there. Um, but yeah, that's it guys. That is my review and impressions on this camera. It is a beast. It is a workhorse of a camera. It is probably one of the biggest like cameras <laughs> of the generation. Um, it has so much in such a little body um, for that's such a reasonable price. It may seem like a lot, but yes, this is a reasonable price for what it offers. And I highly recommend this camera to anyone. And if you're interested in getting one yourself, then check my link in the description and go get yourself this Canon EOS R5, guys. I'm excited to give it a test run. I'll be doing many videos in the future with this camera, just testing out all of its capabilities, testing out the stabilization, testing out the photography and videography. So be sure to keep following my channel. Hit that bell and notification with the subscribe button so you can see all those videos in the future. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video too. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.